In the previous episode, I told you how the universe did not behave and how our concepts about forces and motion were wrong. But in this episode, we're going to explore more and understand what the reality is. Now, if you want to do that, the first step would be going away from the Earth's surface far into some intergalactic space. Nice. The reason you would want to do that is because we want to get rid of gravity, frictional forces and air resistance. That's right, we don't need air. There is no air in intergalactic space, yet I can breathe somehow. We physicists can do that. Alright, now the key to understanding motion and forces is to understand something called as Galilean relativity. And the way it works is like the follows. Imagine you have a box and inside this box there are two people, Alice and Bob. There's a third person who's floating outside the box, let's call her Divya. Now, Divya reports that the whole box, along with Alice and Bob, are moving towards the right with a speed of 10 km per hour. So according to her, Alice is moving at 10 km per hour towards the right. But here's my question. What do you think is the speed of Alice as seen by Bob? Pause this video for a while and think about what it is and please make a vote here. Alright, now this is a familiar situation. If you have ever taken a ride in a taxi or gone in a bus, you know that passengers, your co-passengers, do not move with respect to you. You guys all seem to be at rest with respect to each other. Something similar is going to happen here. Since the box, Alice and Bob all are traveling towards the right at the same speed, Bob says that Alice is at rest. In fact, if Bob looked outside, he would see that Divya is the one who is moving towards the left at 10 km per hour. So now here's the question. Who is right? Or what is Alice's real speed? Is she really moving towards the right as seen by Divya? Or is she as at rest as seen by Bob? Now I know that you are inclined to say that really Alice is moving towards the right at 10 km per hour. The only reason she seems to be at rest from Bob's point of view is because they are both moving together at the same speed. But here's the thing, why should we think about Alice's speed from Divya's point of view? What made Divya so special? Universe doesn't care about who is observing. So Divya's point of view is as good as Bob's point of view. And since Bob says that Alice is at rest, then she must be at rest. So how do you resolve this apparent paradox? Well, Galileo thought, maybe we should come up with an experiment. Is there any experiment that Bob could do that would confirm that they are really in motion and not at rest? Well, he thought about it and guess what? There is no such experiment. There is no experiment that you can do which can tell you whether you're really at rest or you're really in motion. So what I'm trying to tell you is, any experiment that Bob does will confirm that he is at rest and even Alice is at rest. Any experiment that Divya does will confirm that she is at rest and Alice is moving. So what is the bottom line? The bottom line is that rest and motion are subjective words. There is no absolute truth when it comes to rest and motion. Some observers will see Alice to be in motion while some observers will see Alice to be at rest and all of them are right according to their own perspectives. So rest and motion are subjective terms, they are relative terms. That's the whole idea behind the word Galilean relativity. So bottom line is the following. If you find a particle which you say is at rest, then I can always find some observers who will disagree and will say that same particle is moving. Likewise, if you find a particle which is in motion as seen by you, I will be able to find some observers who will say that that particle is at rest as seen by them. So rest and motion are the same things. Every particle can be thought of to be at rest and in motion at the same time uh, from different perspectives. So now let's go back to the question that I asked last time. I asked you what keeps things at rest and we, we thought that, you know, as long as you don't disturb it, no force is acting on it. And what keeps things at motion? Again, we did an experiment and we figured out there must be a force acting on it. But guess what? We just now discussed that rest and motion are the same things. 
So the first and the second question was actually the same question. So if these two questions are same, how can we have two different answers for them? How can we have two contradicting answers where one says, don't put a force, another one says, put a force. Definitely one of them must be wrong, or maybe both are wrong. So what went wrong? Well, we did the experiment in, on Earth where there are invisible forces. But now we are in space, we have gotten rid of all the forces. So if we do an experiment here, our result is going to be accurate. So to understand this, let's repeat an experiment. Consider a ball over here. It is right now at rest as seen by me. What should I do to make sure the ball remains at rest? Nothing, it remains at rest. So you don't have to do anything for the ball to be at rest. Remember, at the same time, from some other observer's point of view, the ball is in motion. That means I don't have to do anything for the ball to be in motion. So any object will either remain at rest or will remain in motion as long as you don't put forces on it. Remember, rest and motion are the same things look from two different point of view. So if you don't need to put a force for rest or for objects to be in motion, what does a force do? Let's find out. If I take my hand and give it a small nudge, now the ball starts moving with respect to me. No longer do I have to push it, the ball keeps on moving forever. So here's the thing. Initially the ball was at rest. Once I gave it a nudge, once I put a small force on it, it went into motion. You see what the force does? A force can change the state of an object from rest to motion. Not just that. Now the ball is moving, I can put a force on it again and change its state. So this time, the force changed the state from motion to rest. I can do more with forces. If the ball is moving, I can give it a punch and change its direction. So you see what happened? The ball was moving this way, I gave it a punch, it changed the direction. So forces can change direction of motion. So what can forces do? Forces can make things at rest to go in motion. Forces can make sure that balls in motion can come to a stop. Forces can change the direction of motion. Forces can increase the speed. They can decrease the speed. Or in other words, forces accelerate the object. That's what forces do. They don't make things move at all. All they do is accelerate the object. They change the object's velocity. If I don't put any force, objects experience no acceleration. If I put little force, the object gets more acceleration and not necessarily more speed. For example, I just showed you, I could decrease the speed of an object, make it come to rest by applying a force. More force gives you more acceleration. So now let's come back to the Earth and we can understand what Newton's first law is. All right, so ready for this? The first law says that if particles are undisturbed, there are no forces acting on them, then they will either remain at rest or they will remain in motion. And if you disturb them, if you put a force on them, then they will accelerate. That's the first law. I hope now you understand something about forces and acceleration. So I repeat, forces do not make things move. They only make things accelerate. Now that we have a clear understanding of what causes rest and motion and accelerations, here is one final question. I have two balls with me. One light ball, which means that the earth is pulling it with less force. And I have one very heavy ball, which means the earth is pulling it with more force. My question is, if I drop these two guys, which one's going to accelerate more and hit the ground first? Remember, more the force, more the acceleration. That's what we studied, that's what Newton's first law says. So if I leave these, if I drop these two guys from the same height, which one's going to hit the ground first? So please make a vote and I will see you next time. So stay tuned.